Welcome to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain, and our weekly sessions in English, thanks to American Friends of the Prada Museum. And we are here live as guests on the museum's social programming. As a nonprofit, our aim is to support this wonderful museum. We encourage you to find out about us and help us in this mission, along with our sister organization in Spain, the Fundación Amigos Somos El Prado. Today, we have again the privilege of being here a few moments before the museum opens in a very special gallery that's dedicated to the enigmatic, fascinating painter from the end of the 15th century, beginning of the 16th century, Hieronymus Bosch. Now, Bosch took his name from the city where he worked and lived and died, which is Hertogenbosch which is of the Duchy of Brabant at the time and is now part of Holland. He, uh, Philip, King Philip II of Spain was thankfully very interested in his work and collected many, of the, many paintings by this painter and thanks to his interest, the Prada Museum has the largest collection of Bosch in the world. Today we're going to look at this fantastic triptych of his, triptych meaning three panels, which was one of his last paintings, and it was painted around the year 1515. Now the triptych is made to open and close, and we are seeing the inside panels at the moment, which are meant to be read from left to right like a book. But when the panels were closed, they create one scene. And one scene, which is painted in this case in full color, and it is a version of Bosch's wayfarer, a pilgrim on the road of life who is dedicatingly pursuing forward besides the dangers and temptations that surround him. He, here we, he's surrounded by temptations. These two figures represent lust, who, and they're dancing. Uh, above them, there is a hangman in the distance, and above the tree, where the, there is a small mm, crucifix, which no one is paying attention to. This is one of the interesting moralistic um, ideas of the painting. So Bosch is famous for his imagination, his creations, his new images but his painting is absolutely moralistic as to good and evil and our ethics as a society, very religious. So the, the wayfarer, he's kind of shabby. You see his, ro his clothes are torn, but he's determined to head, continue forward on his road. And the road is to keep the straight path, to not be pulled in by temptation. Looks out with melancholy, but determination. When we, once the triptych is opened, we see a visual, a visual illustration of, could be the psalm, the book of Psalms, number 14. And the book of Psalms, number 14, says that God looked down upon humankind, saw that all humankind was corrupted with sin, and there was no one doing good, and that they would be punished. Um, he also adds images from the book of Genesis. And so the left panel is the is, has a series of images with the creation, the heavens with God in the heaven, and the rebel angels are being expelled, cast out, and the disobedient angels. So as they're cast out, they turn into these hybrid uh, figures of half mosquitoes, half humans, and you know, monsters and disfigured ideas are, are, are part of the medieval tradition, but Bosch is the first to make these type of hybrid figures. And so he's, he's so famous for his new creation, his imagination of images, and his enigmatic images that we think about where do they come from, what do they mean. As we come down, God, the Father, is creating Eve from Adam and wearing the crown, which we'll see also repeated in the second panel. 
And then Adam and Eve find the temptation with the half figure of the snake, with the human offering the temptation of the apple. And of course, they eat the apple and come down and are cast out of the Garden of Eden, cast out of paradise by this beautiful angel that's very serious and determined that they have to be cast out. Adam seems to explain himself while Eve seems to be embarrassed and looking away. And then this brings us to the middle panel where Bosch, to illustrate how humankind has given way to sin and loss of values, he uses a Flemish popular saying. And the popular saying is, life is like a hay cart and everyone is trying to take some, get what they can. And we see this enormous hay cart in the middle of the painting, which everyone is trying to grab some hay, and it is being followed by even kings and bishops and the noble class. Everyone is fooled and following the hay and trying to get some or trying to climb up upon it. And it seems to be kind of, the, it could be summarized, the moral, uh, the moral of the painting could be summarized by the temptation with the figures above the hay cart, these sets of couples here that have an angel to the left who's praying to God to have mercy on them and to help them resist temptation or the temptation which is embodied by this little blue devil figure who's playing music. And music in Bosch is always an invitation to sin, <laughs> an, a motivator for sin. And they are playing music and they are together, these two figures are fighting over which way uh, they will go with the lovers behind them and also these symbols that are throughout all of Bosch's play, uh, paintings, the owl and the jar, the jug. Owl is of sin, malice, sin, and the jug is also uh, a symbol of lust. Also different types of sins are, are represented here. And the hay cart, as we see, is being pulled to the right, being drawn by these hybrid monster figures that are taking everyone to the right. And we even see, you know, decapitated people who have suffered. Bosch is just filled with symbols and illusions. And they come to the right-hand panel. They're taking everything to the right-hand panel, which is the end of the psalm, which is, we will be punished. And we will tremble in terror. And this is a representation of hell. The monsters are bringing the humans to hell to suffer, to be chased by dogs, to be eaten by half creatures that are half fish, half human. Uh, at the top of the panel, they're in a burning city. And at the same time, this is the only hell that I know of and that I believe some of the researchers know of hell under construction. As we sin, the monsters are making more of this tower in hell to have more space. Uh, possibly our sins make the make hell in construction. Um, so this is a very moralistic painting. Bosch and many times has been has been considered well, under question as to what he means, but he's very moralistic. And his idea is that the hay in life is not what matters, what everything that we're trying to get. It is goodness. And he, and what is important is to believe in God and to follow his instructions and in moral. So, but what makes Bosch so special that we still, 500 years later, we're still fascinated by his painting? Well, of course, because his imagination and where he gets his original sources from literature, from the Bible, from popular sayings, many of which are so far away from us today that we don't, that we miss some of the clues. And, but the way he paints, like here with Jesus as the suffering, he's suffered for humankind to save us. But that these gestures are so 
believable and sincere and he shows all of the follies and dangers. So it's also fascinating to see everything that we should not do. Instead of everything we should do, which could possibly be much more boring, he is moralistic in that he shows us everything that we should not do. And that is fascinating. We know from that he was a sworn member of the illustrious brotherhood of our blessed lady in her Togenbosch, and that means he would have to have a high social status. And we also know from research done in the past decades, uh, especially dedicated to Bosch, that his painting was very much sought after by high-end clients and nobility uh, very, during his lifetime and very close after his death. So he was a very accepted traditional conservative painter during his time. Um, and his images are unending fascinating. Sometimes he's overshadowed by these creations and his popular saying is his fascination of his images, but his technique is amazing. Here, this is one of his later paintings and it's very loose and secure. Um, and he's also very much critical of society, which can be very entertaining to see how he criticizes all of us here. For example, the monks, that are drinking and the nuns that also want to get the hay. So we thank you very much. We hope you will come to the Prado Museum to see these paintings. Um, many of Bosch's paintings were destroyed and thanks to this collection here that was away from many religious wars that took place, we have a lot of the, his large triptychs here at the Prado, and so it's very worthwhile to come visit and see in person and be fascinated by his unending imagination. We hope to see you next week, and thank you for listening. We hope you'll share and find out about American friends and the amigos of the Prado. Thank you so much.